So let's have a look at these bones in a little bit more detail. Let's start off by looking at the clavicle. And on the screen, we can see both a superior and an inferior view of the clavicle. We can see here we've got the sternal end. Here we've got the sternal end. And this is what articulates with the sternum. And then we can see we've got the acromial end over here, here as well. And these form articulations with the acromium of the scapula. So let's look at this in a bit more detail. As I've said, the clavicle connects the sternum to the scapula. It's important as it keeps the upper limb away from the trunk. So it moves the upper limb away from the trunk, again, allowing an increased movement. So there's less chance for the upper limb to hit the chest wall. It's been moved away from the trunk, increasing the movement. We can see here we've got the superior view of a right clavicle, as if we're looking down onto it. We can see again this sternal end. We can see this acromial end. This medial half has a curve, and this lateral half has a curve as well. And it's important in being able to recognize a left from a right clavicle and also the superior and inferior surfaces of the clavicle. So superiorly, a clavicle is smooth. So here we can see on this superior view, this smooth shaft of the clavicle. There's no undulations, there's no grooves, which we'll later see on the inferior view. So if you're seeing a smooth surface, you're looking at the superior surface of the clavicle. If you then see one of these curves, and along its anterior surface, which is here, it's got this curve. This curve is convex. So anteriorly, this curve is convex. Whereas more laterally over here, we can see anteriorly, the curve is concave. And this is how we can orientate our clavicles. We find the smooth superior view, and then anteriorly, we have a convex curve, and anteriorly here, we have a concave curve. And obviously, this is going to be the opposite along this posterior surface. If we then move towards the inferior surface, so this is if we're standing underneath the clavicle and we're looking up, we can see that it's roughened. There's a whole series of tubercles, of features, which are important for articulation with ligaments. And here we can name a few of them. We have what's known as the conoid tubercle. We've got this tubercle here. This is by the acromial end, and we've got the conoid tubercle. This is part of the coracoclavicular ligament, which we'll talk about in more detail later on, an important stabilizing ligament of the shoulder. And we also have, connecting really, the conoid tubercle to this acromial end, the trapezoid line. We can see the trapezoid line, this slight roughened area here. And that's also important because that's where the trapezoid ligament attaches. And this again is part of the coracoclavicular ligament. And this is important, again, in helping to stabilize the shoulder joint. We can see we have an impression for the costoclavicular ligament. We can see that here. This is by the sternal end of the clavicle. And as its name suggests, the costoclavicular ligament is going to attach to the ribs. And this is important in the sternoclavicular joint, which we'll look at again later on in this series. We also have a subclavian groove, and we can see a subclavian groove here. And this is important for attachment of subclavius muscle, a small muscle that runs on the underside of the clavicle. And we'll cover that when we look at the musculature. Another feature on this inferior view of the clavicle is this nutrient foramen, and that is where the nutrient artery passes into the clavicle to give it its blood supply. So here we have an, an, an overview on this slide of the clavicle. This is a right clavicle in this diagram. We have the smooth superior surface, which is convex anteriorly for the medial half and concave anteriorly for the lateral half. The inferior view has a number of features. It's roughened. I've got the conoid tubercle, the trapezoid line, the costoclavicular ligament impression, and also a groove for subclavius.